Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi, guys. It seems like there's already 17 of you here. Hello. I started to say good morning. It's good afternoon. It's almost 2 o'clock and time for us to begin here in a moment. You all can hear me? As you can see here, I'm here at the North School. I decided to venture out and get out now that I got my rental car. I want to be able to get out and about. I'm here at the North Campus. I needed to get some paperwork and things together. Hi, welcome everybody. Hi guys. Hi Barbie. Hey everybody. Welcome. Welcome, yes, it's time for roll call. So I know that some of you may have already started. I don't know um, uh, where we're at here. I'll scroll back up. I know some of you have already been waiting uh, since I put the link up. Um, welcome, welcome, Tabitha, uh, Alexia, Chloe, Kayla Langford, Connie, Katie Vo, Carmen Pacheco, Lauren Garabedian, um, Brenna Womack, Rihanna, my name is Rihanna, Amber Crumb, Hey Lynn, Marbella, Mary Helen, um, let's see here, Allison Cypress, Kylie Cunningham, Taryn McElveen, and uh, Emily Molina, Alexis McDougal, Marina Flagg, um, Hey Barbie, um, Cassie Graff, McKenna Klecka, Olivia Fleck, Marina, uh, I mentioned you just a moment ago, Lauren Rivera, um, Stacey Carter, Lynn Thornhill, um, <laughs> hi Gracie, Gracie's going to be helping us with roll call today, so uh, make sure that you're commenting for her, um, you know, like I said, the, uh, I know some of you like were talking to me the other day and telling me that it's hard, you may be casting um, from your mobile device to your television to make it larger and that may make it harder for you to comment um, as we're going um, and I understand that if that be the case just make sure that you are chiming in for roll calls that's what's most important um, I was hearing some people were getting stressed oh my god did, did we get counted um, uh, never fear like Lauren Garabedian we got you girl so um there uh, and and uh, um, Stacy I know that you um, I'm sorry, uh, Kim Root. I know that you're you guys are busy trying to juggle a lot of different things, and a lot of you are. So make sure that you can comment as, if you can. Uh, but roll call is the most important. Um, so, um, but yeah. So um, welcome, welcome, Lauren Rivera, Stacy Carter. Um, let's see here, uh, Larissa. Ooh, I Miss my little scroll here. Larissa Guandique, uh, Aubrey Baldridge, Hey Serena Tarina, Ali Frias, Roselin. I'm so glad to see you're with us, Roselin. Annabelle Smith, Hey Girl, Marina Flat. Um, let's see here. Goodness, my. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. April Grant, Hey Brianna Barnes, Welcome. I'm glad your name your name's changed to your real name. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Taylor McWhorter, welcome. Kim Tran, Erica Enman, uh, Hannah Broadway, Felice Escamilla, Taylor Campbell, uh, Amber Crom, Faith Elledge, Hey Ana Siciliano, Miranda Hobbs, Leslie Montenegro, Olivia Fleck, Promise, Promise Stegel, um, uh, Miranda uh, Aubrey Baldridge, L Lilla Herman, welcome. Uh, Marisol uh, Perez, Elizabeth Hernandez. I'm just trying to give you all a shout out. Make sure you, you know I'm seeing you girls. And guys, um, Destiny, uh, Jennifer Orr, Lauren Baldwin, welcome. Uh, Taylor Green, girl, I'm so glad to see you're, you're getting here. Um, try to get here as many hours as you can, Taylor. Um, uh, Carson Ivey, Samantha Cap, Monica Murga, Brianna Sanchez, uh, Zuli the Princess, uh, Ava, <laughs> um, Sam Sladish. <laughs> welcome, you guys, welcome. It's two o'clock. Oh, goodness. So this week's uh, name of the game is we've been dealing with uh, body systems. Um, we, we're getting into, uh, Alana kind of hit on all the various different body systems that we have. Um, uh, when I was able to, I you know, look at my mobility now, um, uh, I'm able to move around a lot more flexible. Oh my God, after that car accident, it was hard. But now I've got a lot of my flexibility back. So in the morning, we were trying to do exercises to get you guys 
pumped, your blood circulating, and things like that. That because uh, um, an object in motion tends to stay in motion, and so getting you up and ready for your day is kind of what we try to do from that morning hour from 10 to 11. Uh, some of you girls have probably become night owls. I know that my sleep schedule's kind of changed too, um, you know, and, and it's kind of hard. Um, so when we get back at it. Um, you know, it may be a little difficult. So we're going to try to keep things on an even schedule so you girls um, and guys uh, uh, won't find it so hard coming back to school because hopefully we won't be at this too much longer. But um, anyway, uh, we're glad that you are here participating. Um, but yeah, so we've been going over the various body systems. And like I was saying, that are the are part of the exercise was getting your blood flowing, but not just blood flow, oxygen in the body as well. An aer aerobic aer activity is so important because oxygen and blood flow to the different various body uh, organs and systems help allow them function properly. Your body's like an ecosystem, you guys, like the earth. Think about it. Um, when things are out of whack with the earth, you know, we've been kind of taking advantage of her. Although I heard the good news that that seems like the ozone layer is actually improving. So, uh, hey, maybe the less travel and stuff, our ozone will, um, our atmosphere will help to regenerate itself. But yeah, um, it, our bodies are just like the earth. It's an ecosystem, uh, garbage in, garbage out, what you eat and what you do and things like that. Um, we, Our body is our temple. It's our vessel. We got to take care of it. I know that this is like the pot calling the kettle black here. Um, I'm not the epitome of, of physical health by any means, but um, doing things you know, that you can making smarter choices throughout your day um, can help you um, take care of your body because we only get one body um, unless you believe in reincarnation, which you might. Um, but, you know, while we're here, this is the one we got. We can't, you know, we can't jump into somebody else's body if, if this one wears out. So we got to take care of them. So your various different pot body systems, there's a ton of them, you know, our nervous system, our, our respiratory system, our circulatory system, our digestive system. Our skeletal system, I mean, all of that stuff is involved with this anatomy and stuff. So it's real important information. So I hope you girls and guys are taking notes properly. Um, all of this information um, uh, from time to time may seem unimportant maybe to you at first, but it is very important to you when we're servicing the human uh, as a whole. Um, we're servicing their body and we're, 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 um, we're to protect their health and help maintain their beauty. Um, and so we need to know the proper anatomy and the, and the things that uh, um, are abnormal so we can kind of uh, um, have a, a person seek treatment. I don't know if you guys have heard this before, but um, I know that we, I don't know if you, if he, I have said it many times, but I don't teach as much as I used to. Um, but, you know, we're the first line of defense a lot of times for people. Uh, people will come to the salon stylist when they have a problem with their hair or scalp, um, estheticians if they have a problem with their skin, um, and obviously um, a nail techs if they have a problem with their feet and their hands um, before they'll go to a doctor. So sometimes we can be the uh, first line of defense uh, against catching um, ailments for people. Um, I'd seen an, a, a, a deal where a hairstylist actually caught skin cancer on their client's scalp by noticing an, um, uh, an, an abrasion, a wound on their scalp that seemed abnormal. It, it was um, changing shape and color and she got it biopsied and, and it was skin cancer and it was actually, um, it saved her life because skin cancer can take your life if, if not uh, intervene. Hey, Jeremy, my comment got pushed up when do you think you'll be able to? Oh, hey, Tabitha. Yeah, um, I updated your hours already through uh, b -b 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 Sunday. I did not put in yesterday's hours because um, the timesheets that were given to me, I had to add them up. And, um, you know, not everyone mm, uh, <laughs> um writes as clearly as I would like. So um, yeah, I'm adding those up. So I'll have them posted. I'm hoping by the end of today or tomorrow, I should be able to just enjoy another blast uh, because it is the end of the month. So I'll be posting March hours to TDLR. Um, so you guys are doing great. So keep logging in and keep doing roll call. And that way we're getting you those hours and stuff. If there's anybody, um, we may now uh, start having some new students uh, come into the fray. And so I, I hope you guys will welcome with the open arms. Um, during this temporary time that we're doing this online distance learning. But thank you guys for doing it. I know some of you are perturbed about seven days a week and uh, things like that, but we that's for ultimate flexibility. Um, you guys, uh, I don't want you to feel super, super pressured, you know, like if it's something that's, 
uh, you know, if you gotta, if you have to work and you have to miss it, um, you can definitely, um, this is just an opportunity for you to collect hours if possible um, and keep you kind of progressing. So we're glad that you have, yes. So I'll get it to you um, as soon as I can, uh, Tabitha, okay? All right, so like I was talking about, we've been dealing with anatomy. We started getting into anatomy, and this is important, like I said, because you're going to be dealing with the human body and its movements. Um, uh, you're affecting the body, whether we're doing scalp massage during a shampoo, whether we're doing facial massage during a facial, we're doing hand and arm massage or leg massage in a manicure or pedicure service. We are affecting the body. So if you are going to be a professional, licensed professional that is dealing with the public, you must be educated on these things. And so... Um, uh, you, need, you need to, it is important also for your licensure in order to be able to do services, you have to be able to answer these questions that may appear on your test. Um, like you've heard Wendy say, and, and I say, um, all of the teachers have said before, we pull from different sources. Um, we want to try to give you as much of a broad uh, range of information. So in case those weird questions pop up on state board, you won't get um, confused. So our body system we're going to be talking about is good old skeletal system. Them bones, them bones, them bones. Um, uh, we have already started, I believe, with Alana earlier today. She had a little hiccup with her YouTube Live. I hope that mine will not uh, 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 have any technical difficulties with the Internet or anything, but you never know. But rest assured, I've got you on roll, so don't you girls and guys worry. Um, but uh, Alana had already kind of hit on some of the structures, I believe, of the hand and arms and stuff. And uh, um, there are some handouts that have been emailed to you. There was a packet that Wendy had Katie send out to you guys. You should already have. I hope you've already taken a look at it. I'll go ahead and show you uh, my printed out version. I don't know how well you guys can see. Um, let's see here. So, yeah, that's this bad boy here. Okay. Had uh, uh, the skeletal system. My images are a little faded on mine. You guys remember having received this email? You may or may not have gotten to print it out. And that's okay if you don't have a printer at home. I didn't until I got here at the school. Um, some of you may have to write this stuff down or may have already written ahead of time. I'm just showing you the pages of the handout. Okay. Um, I'm here in the office without any lights on. I didn't want it to be too bright. Is it okay lighting? Can you guys see well enough? Can you? Can you guys see me well enough and everything? In this diagram too. So we're going to cover this entire packet and the information contained within. I will reference these if you need. If you want to write these down on a separate notebook paper, um, if, the, if you don't have a printer, that's great. Um, if you want to go ahead and label after we're done with the information, that's fine too. Okay, um, but that, that way you're, you've got the information and it won't be like the first time you saw it. So those emails, you're also going to be getting upcoming emails for tomorrow's lesson as well. I'll be back with you from two to four again tomorrow. Um, more than likely, uh, I'll be the entire week from two to four more than, uh, I mean, during the week. Um, that's usually what, what uh, we do. We're rotating kind of around, if you notice. Um, so that way we'll do that. So we'll get through some subject matter. All right. So we are talking about the body system, okay, that is known as the skeletal system. That's what we're going to be talking about today. You've already kind of uh, started the conversation. We're just going to kind of get a little bit more in depth. I'm uh, the type of person I, I want to make sure that you have all of the pieces to the puzzle for yourself. So first, we're going to talk about the skeletal system. I like this cute little image. from humble beginnings. So we're talking about the skeletal system. So start your notes off. It illuminates through the computer light. Oh, through with the computer light. Okay, yes, but you're, but you're not glistening like usual. <laughs> 
yeah, well, that's that powder. To, maybe I needed that dusty effect just to hide the, the wrinkles. I need to get what Judge Judy has. Have y'all ever watched her show? It's so funny. Like, she's sitting there on the bench, and everyone's in HD, crispy. And then it, it pans to her, and then all of a sudden, it's all soft around her. <laughs> I'm like, that's fake. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, yes, it came in yesterday, the, the email come. <laughs> it is cooler in here. I'm not a, a, yeah, I have the lights off. So yeah, the skeletal system. You may ask yourself, Jeremy, ponder on this. What is the skeletal system? What is it? It's obviously a system. So write this down in your notes. What is the skeletal system? Well, if you didn't get it, I promise you should be able to follow along. We're going to be doing vocabulary. Okay. Okay, we're going to be doing the vocabulary. So what is the skeletal system? It is the physical foundation of the body. Okay. It is the physical foundation of the body, yada, yada. It is the physical foundation of the body. And bones are the hardest structures in the body. It's the physical foundation of the body comprised of bones. It's made up of bones, where bones are the hardest structures in the body, yada, yada. Okay? The physical foundation of the body comprised of bones. And bones are the hardest structures in the body. I'm sorry, I don't have a lovely assistant like Lauren, and I don't have a board behind me to write on, so that's why I've got these papers for you, okay? Hope this helps me. I'm hoping I'm holding, I've been watching your comments in class, and I know that sometimes we move a little too quickly, so I'm going to try to make sure that you've got enough time, and then you can see it properly, okay? I hope this helps you guys, okay? What, what's the deal? It says, my mom said, no, keep the notes. What's that? Is everything okay? Okay. Let me know if something's wrong. I, I can't watch everybody's comments at the time. All right. So we talk about the skeletal system, and it's made up of bones. How many bones? Oh, okay. How many bones make up that skeletal system or make up the human body? How many? Them bones, them bones, and bones. Let's answer that question. You may have already heard that we start off with 300 bones. How many bones? You guys are right. That's right. 300 easily turned into good old 206. 206 bones. Those bones become less, fewer, fewer bones because they fuse together as you grow. As a child comes out of the womb, you guys, 
they're usually very soft. They're the most, uh, they're the, they really are very uh, soft and malleable. That way they fit through the birth canal and they're able to come out. So their, their skull is quite, has to squeeze quite through a path. So it's, so their skull has these plates that later on fuse together. from larger bones. So 300 turns into 206. That's right. That's why they always look weird. They look conical in shape. And then you know that there were uh, um, back in the olden days and other centuries and stuff and other cultures would wrap their children's head while the bones were soft. So the bones, when they hardened, would actually take on particular shapes. Um, also did that to those little dancers with their feet. They bound their feet together. Oh, so sad. But yeah, the body, the skeletal system in the body is comprised of 206 bones after you have fully matured. Okay. Now, when we talk about bones that make up the system, uh, the skeletal system, we think of the word os or the prefix os, O-S, os. Like osteobiflex, for instance, is, a, is a, a product that one can take to help their skeletal system. It has the word os in there because the prefix os means bone. The prefix part or word os, O-S, means bone. So you can see it used. Such as the word osteology. We know ology is the study of osteo is bone study of the bones and their structures so the word os or prefix os means bone and when we're talking about bones the study of the bones and their structures is known as osteology osteology that's a term you need to be familiar with oops sorry raise it up Osteology. Okay. Os means bones when you're dealing with words. And osteology has that beginning osteo, meaning bone, and ology, study of the bone and their structures. Okay. Now, the skeleton itself, I told you already, it's it's the foundation of the body, yada, yada, you know. Some maybe have taller skeletons or shorter skeletons, you know. But our skeletal system does a lot of things for us. There are four main things that it really does provide us. Obviously, it supports the body. It's what allows us to stand up. You know, we're not just some blob on the floor like a jellyfish. We're not spineless, right? So it gives our body shape and strength. It gives our body strength. Okay. Excuse me. We'll talk about the skeletal system. It gives the body, oops. Gives the body its strength. Supports the body, gives it shape, and also gives it strength. That's one function or one benefit to having a skeleton or having a skeletal system. Another benefit or a second benefit, rather, would be... Surrounding and protecting your internal organs. Surrounding and protecting your internal organs. Your lungs are so paper thin and fragile that your rib cage helps to protect those airbags. Okay? Protect your heart and your chest. Those are your vital organs that keep you alive. They are part of your 
respiratory and circulatory system. Without those, you couldn't function. So those bones help to protect your internal organs as well. A third function or benefit of your skeletal system is providing a frame for muscles so where, where muscles can attach, right? You need your muscles too, whether it be a cardiac muscle, which is of the heart and the circulatory system, or it be a muscle like the muscles in your legs that help to propel you and move you about. They give you movement. And that leads me into the fourth one, obviously. It allows for body movements, movement of the body. Okay. I hope I'm going slow enough and I've got everything, okay? So it supports the body, gives it shape and strength. It surrounds the internal organs to protect them. And it provides a frame for which muscles can attach. And it allows for the movement of the body, yadi yadi. I like the way you move, right? Okay. All right. So those are some functions that the skeleton does for us that you may have not have realized. But the skeleton, we have it. It protects us. It's the framework of the body. But you probably wonder, ask yourself this question. How is it held together? How do them bones stay together? How is it held together? How's it held together? You're right. You guys are you guys are there. It's a combination. <laughs> you guys are right. joints okay both movable and immovable two bones can join together in a solid formation that's not movable it's called immovable and then they can fuse in a way that they can be movable of course if they're going to be movable that's going to involve ligaments both movable and immovable joints that are held together by ligaments, short bands of tough connective tissue. So if they fuse together and they're solid, not movable, okay? But if they are movable, they're gonna involve ligaments. Oops, I'm sorry, I was way too low with it. Yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> Is that better? Yes. So that's right. So the, it's held together by joints, either movable joints that have ligaments involved for movement or immovable where they're kind of fused. Okay. I know my voice is not the most appealing, but hey, <laughs> anything else we get uh, get us kicked off of here if I play music. 
All right. So that's how it's held together is via joints, both movable and immovable. Right? Movable and immovable. So that's the overall skeleton, if you think about it, the skeletal system, what it does, you know, for you, allows you to move and how it's held together. Now here's a here's a differentiation that we need to differentiate. We're going to talk about with our structures we're going to go into is we're going to talk about the top part of your skeleton. The most important part that houses your nervous system and stuff. Skull versus cranium. That's right. Skull versus cranium. What's the difference, guys? I mean, don't we use it interchangeably for the most part? Skull versus cranium. What's the difference? Huh? Yes. Ligament definition. Okay. Let me go back in case you didn't see it. We did cover what ligaments are, okay? So the, the skeleton is held together with joints, both movable and immovable. The movable joints, of course, obviously, are held together with ligaments, which are short bands of tough connective tissue. Short bands of tough connective tissue. Okay, so you got that, Mary Helen? Okay, now we went back to skull versus cranium. What's the diff? Well, if you talk about skull versus cranium, the skull is the bigger picture. It's the entire head, okay? The skull is the entire head. that is composed of both the cranium and the facial skeleton. So the skull is the entire head that is broken down into two, two parts. We have the cranium and the facial skeleton. The front and the back, right? The skull is the head, the entire melon. Which, if you watch The Walking Dead, did you see Alpha? Hers rolled. Just kidding. I mean, I'm not. Spoiler alert, I guess. I should have said. Anyway, the skull is the head, and it's comprised of both the cranium and the facial skeleton. Now, the skull or head is actually comprised of 22 bones, 22 different bones that make up the skull or the head, 22. Okay. So there are going to be eight bones of the cranium and 14 of your face. That's right. There's 14 bones in that RBF. Okay, so 22 comprise the entire skull or head, 
eight of the cranium and 14 of the face. <laughs> That's right, resting bitch face. RBF. Are you a sufferer? I don't think anyone suffers from it. I think it's actually can be an advantage. People, people don't mess with you. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to get into the facial skeleton. So write that down in your notes. We're going to get into the facial skeleton and the various different bones contained within. Okay. So let's break it down. So there are 14 bones within the facial skeleton. 14. So give yourselves 14 spaces in your notes because we're going to define them. Well, actually, no, not 14 spaces because some of them are, have more than one bone, obviously. Okay, so make plenty of room. So there are 14 bones within the facial skeleton. However, there are only going to be nine that are involved or affected during massage, when we're massaging the face. Okay? There may be 14, but only nine are typically denoted. Only nine are typically involved in massage in the salon. Okay. Let's write them down. We have the mandible. We have maxillae. Nasal. Zygomatic and lacrimal. Write these down. We're going to define each of these. The mandible, maxillae, nasal, zygomatic, and lacrimal. Okay. So these are going to be the nine that are involved in massage. Obviously, there's more than one involved. There's one mandible, two maxillae. There's two of, there's only one mandible, but two of everything else. That's your nine right there. Okay, so write these down. We're going to define them. Wherever you want to do it, you can put it on the paper or you can put it on your note paper. I, I, I just want you to have this information. You're going to need it. All right, so the first one, okay, let's define them. Okay. The first one is the mandible. The mandible. The mandible is the lower jaw. And of the cranium, of the skull, of the head, it is the strongest bone of your head. I know it says their body. Um, there's kind of like a, a tie between that and your femur. Um, but yeah, those are the strongest bones of your body, the femur and your and your your lower jaw. Hey, you guys like those crime and those those like the uh, murder mysteries and stuff, where they lose the body but then they find the jawbone later in the in the leaves. That's creepy, I know, but it's true because they you know it's one of the strongest bones of the body. It just doesn't break. You all watching that tiger thing on Netflix too? Carol fed her husband to the tigers with sardine oil. 
pay it up every bit. <laughs> that shows a trip. Anyway, the mandible, it's the lower jaw, strongest bone of the body or of the head. The next one, there's two of them, maxillae. It's the two bones of the upper jaw, the top teeth. Okay. Two bones of the upper jaw. So that's three out of the nine. Then we have the nasal bones. Nasal bones. There's two of those. Nasal bones are two bones that form the bridge of your nose. Even if they're crooked. Isn't it so violent? Have y'all ever watched like that um, reality TV where they do like those nose straps and things? How they go in there with a hammer and break it? It's crazy. Okay. So the nasal bones are two bones that form the bridge of the nose. And then the last one, the last two, are the zygomatics. Sounds like a band, right? The zygomatics. These are two bones that form the upper cheek area. These are what we accentuate with highlight and rouge. We try to bring, draw attention to them, right? Okay. Zygomatic are the two bones that form the upper cheeks. Am I going the right speed? Are you guys able to, am I going okay? Are you guys seeing it all? Everything good? Okay. All right, good. Thanks, guys. I just needed a few confirmations. I just wanted to make sure. All right. So those are the nine that are involved in, in massages uh, when you were massaging the face. Okay. There's nine. Well, there's 14 of the face, but these are the nine that are involved. Oh, sorry. Lacrimal. <laughs> I left one out. Lacrimal. There's two of those as well. My math's off today, guys. Lacrimal. These are the two smallest bones that form the front part of the inner bottom eye socket. Form the front part Yeah, it was only seven. I didn't do the right. <laughs> it's Two smallest bones, actually, that form the front part of the inner bottom eye socket. What a definition. <laughs> you can see why these wouldn't really be... Um, Hold on, how many is that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, these, these two at the bottom are the. Okay. So then we have the other five. These are the nine. That are affected with by massage services. Mandible, maxillae, wait, five terms. Mandible, maxillae, nasal, zygomatic, and lacrimal. Right. Those are five terms 
but the maxillae are two, the nasal are two, zygomatic are two, and lacrimal are two. Okay, so if you add those all up, that's nine bones. So the remaining five, the remaining five bones, okay, that are not involved in massage services are turbinal, vomer, and palatine. Turbinal are two bones that are spongy, spongy sides of the nasal cavity. You can see why these wouldn't be involved in massage, really. There are two spongy bones on the sides of the nasal cavity to form the nasal cavity. Then you have the vomer bone, which is one bone. It's the center bone the vertical bone that separates the two nasal cavities. Like when you're looking at the skeleton of the face, it's got that hole where your nose would go and it's a vertical bone that separates the two nasal cavities. And then of course we have the last two of the five, the palatine. Now, if you think about the, you know, your, your mouth and stuff, right? What do they call that? Your palate? Well, palatine is the roof of your mouth and the bottom of your eye sockets. Those are two bones that come together in your mouth to form the roof of your mouth and the bottom of the eye sockets. You think about your palate, that'll help you think about your mouth. You got to cleanse your palate between wine flavors. Same way you gotta snort the coffee between perfume scents when you're going into bath and body. You're a little overwhelmed. Okay, so these are the last five of the facial skeleton to equal 14. So these are all 14 bones of your face, of your facial skeleton. Okay. Oh, tubes in your ears. Yeah, I had those um, when I was a kid too, I had them twice. Get your tonsils and your adenoids out. It's like a whole round robin thing. They don't do it so much anymore, I don't think. Like back in the day, it was like if your kid got sick and had ear infections, just take it all out. Now they're kind of like wanting to save everything. So it's kind of rare. But when they, you know, surgery, I didn't realize until I was older, until I was an adult, you guys, that surgery is a big deal. I guess putting anesthesia is rather putting people under. I mean, when I was a kid and I was like, yeah, I want to go have surgery, get my tonsils out and get some ice cream. But now, like, if you're an adult, people are scared if you go do something like that. Oh, my God, you're going to be put under. You know? You're going to have a colonic, and they want to put you under. And it's like, oh, I don't know. But, yeah, apparently, you know, anesthesia is the hard part. But So those are the 14 bones of your face. Now let's talk about the bones of the cranium. There were 14, there's 22 of the head of the skull itself. So 14 of the face, that means there's eight of the cranium. Just as with the face though, just as with the face, we only care about, really, I mean, I'm going to give you the, all of them, but really only six of them are affected by massage in the salon. Okay. Oops. Only six of them are affected by services we provide in the salon, typically. Okay. You're going to need to write these down because we're going to define them as well. There's eight bones, but only four terms. So leave yourself some space.
for these four terms. And we're going to define them as well. We've got the frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal. These are used as anatomical markers every day of your life in this salon industry. Whether we're doing facials, we're referencing the bones of the face to know where to apply pressure, where to apply product. We're doing this in shampoos. We're doing this in hairstyling when we're referring to places to start on the head when we're doing styling or cutting. These are terms you need to know, I like the back of your hand. Sorry guys, thought my ringer was off. Yeah, you should say these all the time. You, you just come second nature. It's okay if you guys are writing. It's okay. I know it takes time to write it, especially if you don't have a printer and whatnot. I Writing it helps you remember it. I'm taking it slow enough. I sh you should be okay. Okay, so don't worry. I'm not. I can see you're all here. There's still 72 of y'all here. Okay, so did you get all the terms? Frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal. All right. Now, let's go ahead and list these bones of the cranium. The first bone, and I say bone, it's not plural, is the frontal bone. Whether you're a forehead or a five head, there's only one bone. It's the flat bone on the front of your face above your eyes. It forms the forehead or five head or three head, whatever you want to call it. You know, some people have the really low hair, hair lines and you can only use one finger or two. And you got the people with the really big forehead, you're going to put your whole hand on them and cleanse their entire forehead. But it's okay. It's one bone. It's the frontal bone. It forms the forehead. Okay, it is the frontal bone, one bone that forms the forehead. The next one is two bones. <clears throat> Excuse me. Parietal. Parietal. These are actually two bones. Parietal. We call it the parietal ridge when we're cutting hair, right? Two bones that form the crown and the upper sides of the head. The crown and the crown and the upper sides of the head. Okay. Parietal. Where the top and the bottom part of the head, the widest part we call the widest part of the head, we call it the parietal ridge, remember? Parietal, two bones, one for each side. These are forming the cranium. So one bone, then two bones. The next one is occipital. It is one bone. One bone. Occipital, one bone that forms the back of the skull. 
or nape area. Forms the back of the skull or the nape area. It's what some of us need to make sure that we're cupping our hand better to catch the water so they're not wetting the shirts and the clothing, but also making sure that we're properly scrubbing and making the client feel clean. Occipital area. We reference that area often. And then it just gets more obvious with temporal the temples. Temporal bones are two bones because there's one on each side. Both sides in the temple area just above the ears. Temporal. Two bones on both sides of the head, in the known as the temple area that is above the ear. We affect pressure there when we're massaging, right? We stop at the temple area. I've watched that facial video so many times when I've taught it over the years. Saying goodbye to the body. Say good boy. With finger frictions. Right. So those were six bones of the eight. There are eight of the cranium, and there are six that we involve with massage or that are affected by massage. There are two more bones that remain. Remaining two bones of the cranium are not involved in massage. In massage. Two remaining bones of the eight. We have the sphenoid. Sphenoid, or sphenoid, however you want to say it, sphenoid. This is the bone behind the eyes that connects all of the bones of the cranium together. It's an important bone. I mean, man, connects them all. But you can see how we wouldn't be involving it in salon services because we're not getting behind the eyes. The sphenoid, it's the bone behind the eyes that help to connect all the bones or that does connect all the bones of the cranium, all eight. The last of these cranium bones is the ethmoid, ethmoid. Ethmoid is a spongy bone that is between your eyes. Spongy bone between the eyes that helps to form the nasal cavity. Ethmoid is a spongy bone between the eyes that forms the nasal cavity. Great, guys. How are you guys doing? Did you get all that? You got it? 
Do I need to repeat any of that or or you have any questions about what we covered thus far? We're about to take a few minutes. Of, we're going to take about a 10, 15 minute break, 10 or 15 minute break here in a moment to use the restroom. And then we're going to come right back. I'm going to leave this running. You're doing good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay, good. All right, guys, we're going to take a 15 minute break. So uh, it is now 250. So I guess come back at like 310. Yeah, 310. Okay, I'll see you guys in a minute, in a few minutes.
Welcome back. Sixty-nine, the last couple. Welcome back, everyone. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. We're fixing to get started and finish up. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know. I see you. Welcome back. Got your potty break in, I hope. things that pop in my head sometimes with y'all's comments. Welcome back. I lost a couple of you, though. Now down to 66. What the heck? Where you is? Come back. Come back. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I grabbed a snack. Sorry, guys. I didn't have lunch or anything. I know I'm just starving. Look at me. Okay. All right. Try guys. Oh wait, are those the guys that the? Tr well, I think so. It's like a th group of three guys. They're funny. They try different things. <laughs> They're embarrassing usually. <laughs> All right, guys. We don't have a whole lot left. Here's a little frightening, uh, oh, if a little uh, thing from my uh, book here. If you are allergic to cows or milk, think twice about collagen injections. If you're looking to make your lips more pouty, collagen is actually derived from cattle. So um, just in case you didn't know. Oh, 
this is sad. One out of one out of ten Americans generally, and four out of ten people. Wait, one out of ten Americans generally, and four out of ten people have allergies. Are alert uh, or are allergic to dogs or cats? Cat allergies, however, are twice as common as dog allergies. More than fifty percent of American homes have a cat or dog. Ew, I knew I always didn't like those hand dryers. It may be cheaper to install a hot hair hand dryer in a public restroom than to provide towels, but it isn't necessarily cleaner. Blowing dryers gather bacteria from the air and propel them onto your hands. I knew it. The Dyson blade. This is interesting about procrastinators. I'm kind of a, a, a procrastinator. It says here, procrastinators have uh, had 20% more headaches, colds, and stomach aches than those who got things done on time. They also visited the doctor 60% more often. Procrastinating students had grades a whole lot higher than, than timely students, however. <laughs> Uh, is it is procrastination a form of like anxiety? I don't know. I was just going to see if there was another one more. Ew. A study done in the early 1990s showed that the number of fecal bacteria in a hotel bathroom doubled when the room cost less than $40 per night. <laughs> Today, after inflation, the dollar amount might be slightly higher, though. Ew. All right. Let's go ahead and finish up. So now we were talking about the skeletal system as a whole, and it is comprised of bones, which are the hardest structures in the body. And the, the word os means bones, right? And osteology is the study of bones and their structures. Um, so that kind of clues you in. We talk about the, the skeletal system providing the framework or the structure and shape to the body. Um, we talked about it being comprised of 206 bones and how they're attached together at joints, both immovable and movable. And the ones that are movable, they're attached with what are called ligaments, which are a tougher type of uh, material, uh, connective tissue that allows for movement. Uh, the benefits of the skeleton system, obviously, it protects your internal organs. It gives your body shape. It helps to uh, make you rigid. Um, it... Uh, also allows for movement of the body and uh, um, the bones are what allow the muscles to attach to. We talked about uh, specifically the uppermost part of our body, talking about our skull, the skull being comprised of 22 bones and 14 of which were the facial skeleton and then obviously the cranium the eight in the cranium. We talked about with the facial bones that 
Uh, nine of them were what are involved with massage services or can be affected by massage. The other five were not. And then with the cranium, there were eight bones, but six of them were affected by massage and two were not. So that comprises all 22 of the skull. So that is for the skeleton or the skull. Okay. Now we're going to go and lower it a little bit. Now we're going to go lower on the body. Alana already talked about the hands and the forearm and whatnot earlier. Okay. We're actually going to get into the bones of the foot and the leg. Okay. Bones of the foot and the leg. Them bones and bones and bones. Now, in your packet, in your packet, I'm going to reference your packet. We've already covered the types of bones, right, ligaments, and we've defined those terms for the vocabulary. We listed the 14 bones of the face, okay, and we defined those as well. Now, we should be looking at this, okay? This is what you should be working on at this point, okay? The image is a little dusty, but we have the femur, teletility and all that, okay? So much we're looking at. So if you have that handout, great. If you're able to print it out. If not, if you already pre-wrote it down, perfect. Okay. Now we're going to define the various different bones. Okay. Terminology. Bones of the leg. And now we're, we're not talking foot, we're talking about the bones of the leg. Okay, the first one is the femur. The femur, it is the portion of bone or the bone that is from the knee to the hip. Okay, from the hip to the knee or to the knee to the hip. It is the strongest in the body. Your femur, your thigh bone, essentially. Okay. The femur is the bone from the knee to the hip. It is the strongest in the body. Okay? So that's the femur. That's the longest bone of your leg. It's your thigh bone. It is the hardest bone in the body to break. Yes, that's true, Joanna. <laughs> but it can be done, though, right? It can be done. The next bone of the leg is the patella, the patella. Well, that's what we, that's what we were talking about earlier. The jaw is the strongest bone of the head and the femur is the strongest bone of the body. But, um, so those are the, the two, you know, okay, the patella is the kneecap that protects the knee 
joint. Can get a little crunchy as we age, right? When Arthur comes to visit in, arthritis. Okay. So the patella, it's the kneecap that protects the knee joint. Harry, you didn't know what you got yourself into. It's a gaggle of girls. They'll take you down every time. Don't cross them. I suggest you sit quiet, Harry. The knees do get crunchy, girl. I, I don't know if you've ever chewed on ice before or eating cereal. I have a hard time hearing like the television if I'm watching eating something. Um, <sighs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's hard to hear. The same thing, like when I'm going upstairs, you hear the crunch. <laughs> and it will happen to you too as you age, all you young ones. I was there once too and thought it would never happen. <laughs> I like that, Destiny. Your block button game is strong. <laughs> <laughs> girls run the world girls now i got that song stuck away now <laughs> but the patella is the knee joint is the <clears throat> protects the knee joint <laughs> i know emily it happens girl <laughs> um then there's the tibia tibia sounds kind of funny as a word tibia this is also known as the shin bone, the shin bone of the lower leg. It is the second largest. Bone of the body. Second largest bone of the body. It's the shin bone. Um, have you ever had shin splints? Man, I remember as a kid when you're growing and you're in athletics and stuff, having shin splints, they are so painful. They are very painful. What? Who doesn't have theirs? I don't have mine. <laughs> I, I know, I know, Roselle, I know. I won't talk about being old. <laughs> Sorry, girl. <laughs> oh. That's so funny. But the tibia is also known as the shin bone, which is the second largest bone. Second largest of the body. The next one is the fibula, the fabulous fibula. The fabulous fibula. The shin splints were the worst pain of your life. Well, Mary Helen, you're still young. From what I hear, childbirth's a, a big one. <laughs> The fabulous fibula is also known as the calf bone. Okay. So you have your femur, which is one bone, but then your lower leg is consists of two bones, the tibia and the fibula. Just like your arm, you have your um, you have your bicep area where which is one bone, but then your lower arm, you've got it's got two bones. Okay, so the fibula is also known as the calf bone. It's small. It's the smaller of the two leg bones. I guess maybe I shouldn't have put the second largest of the body. Maybe I should put the second largest of the leg. Maybe. But yeah. Okay. So these are the bones of the leg, the femur, patella, tibia, and fibula. So be sure to write these down with the definitions. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, AKA means also known as, sorry, not the gun, not the assault rifle. No. I, today was a good day. I didn't have to use my AKA. No. <laughs> that song, he didn't say AKA, he says AK. <laughs> Okay, so AKA means also known as, another name for, or uh, whatever you want to say that, okay? All right. So those were the bones of the leg. Now we're going to go down to the tootsies, to the feet. Bones of the foot. Okay. Bones of the foot. These are on your diagram as well. Okay. The first bone of the foot or the tootsie. Ooh. What was that, Jeremy? Calcaneus. Calcaneus. These boots were made for walking, and that's just what they do. We're going to walk our boots all over you, Harry. <laughs> just kidding. Calcaneus. It's the heel bone. Okay. It's the heel bone. It's the rear of the foot. Okay. Calcaneus. Now, in that same area, we have the tarsals, okay? The tarsals. Tarsals. Tarsals are the bones that form the ankle joint. Form the ankle joint. That heel bone, that calcaneus, is the strongest bone in that area. Okay. Well, give me a like, guys. Give me a like. I do it for the I do it for the gram. I do it for the gram. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So the tarsals form the ankle joint. That heel bone is part of it, the calcaneus, and it is the strongest of those bones of the foot. Think about it. It's taking the most amount of impact when you're sissy in that walk, right? Okay. When you stomp. When you're out there line dancing. The next are called metatarsals. The tarsals were the ankle. Metatarsals are the bones of the top of your foot. There are five long, slinky bones that form the top of your foot. The metatarsals. The metatarsals. I have to make sure now that I wear wider shoes because if I have uh, more narrow shoe, shoes, those metatarsals get squeezed together and cause inflammation and pain within the, the tissues. So now that I'm buying wider footwear, I have less problems with that pain. I used to have uh, plantar fasciitis, which is the muscular and tendon tissue on the bottom getting inflamed. Okay. So the metatarsals are those five long slender bones on the top of the foot. And then last but not least, my favorite, 
the phalanges. Phalanges. Believe it or not, there are 14 of those bones, but the phalanges. 14 bones of the tholes. Phalanges are the 14 bones of the toes. Fourteen bones of the toes. So that concludes the actual vocabulary portion. Okay. Bye, little man. It's okay. I hope they mutilate it real good, okay? Take care. Don't want no short, short, right? Okay, so that is done with the vocabulary, okay? Now, what I want you to go and do is with, with what you've learned thus far, I want you to fill out your diagram. Ooh, that's what I want. Can you label your diagram on your own from memory? No? Huh? Don't look at my numbers. Don't look at mine, what's going on. I'm just talking about from yours, because I was kind of like playing around with it. There's a page with huge blanks. Not sure. If you don't have a printer, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Maybe maybe you lay the piece of paper over your phone and trace it or trace it off your computer screen. Here, you want me to let you trace it? Trace it. Huh, you don't want to try? You don't want to try to trace it? Huh? <laughs> do your best. This is not a big deal. I just wanted to see if you could do it from memory. You know what I found out, you guys? Um, Katie, I don't know if she's on here or not. Katie was telling Wendy that uh, there was no need for Tiny Scanner anymore because your iPhone will do it on it, turn it into PDFs on its own. I haven't figured out that feature yet, but what I did find out is that like uh, 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 Marie Lord actually uh, sent me a form to complete, and since I was at home, I didn't have a printer. I found out on my phone that I could actually save the form and edit it and add text to it and even add my signature to it. It was amazing that you can do it with your phone. And so I was so excited that Marie actually had what needed that done because then I learned something new. So I wonder if you could do that with your phone, like, uh, um, maybe if you could edit it that way with your phone. Oh, so, uh, you're talking about, uh, this one, Wendy, that one. Okay. All right. I wouldn't worry about it. You guys, thank you so much for participating with me. Remember, you have to follow up. There's going to be a five uh, from five to six. You'll be back with, uh, uh, I don't know who's doing it today. Oh, wait, I had written it down. Wendy had said this morning. I even wrote it down, Jeremy. Dumb, dumb. What did I do with it? Anyway, there's still one more class today from five to six as a recap. 
Bye, Aubrey. No worries. So, um, like I said, as a recap, you, uh, from 5 to 6, and then we'll see you back at 10 o'clock tomorrow as well. So come back at 5, and then uh, from 5 to 6, and then uh, tomorrow morning from 10 to 11, and uh, we'll have some more information for you. Um, I hope I took it slow enough. I hope you guys were able to get it. Um, uh, I think so, for the most part. Pretty digestible. It's not uh, super hard, but... Um, just a lot. There's a lot of material to cover, so there's more to come for sure as we get into the other various different body systems. So, um, no worries, guys. Mwah, mwah. No worries, but let's go ahead and do a final roll call. Let's do a final roll call for everybody so we can get you your credit for your 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 lovely time with me today. Thank you for final roll call, you guys. Hold on, let me tell you who's five to six. It was Katie last week, so I think it is, is it Molly? Let me look. La, 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 la. Hold on one second. This text thread is deep. Oh my God. Okay, so it will be, today's not Monday, tomorrow's, it'll be, uh, it's going to be Katie from five to six, it'll be Katie again, okay, and I'll be back with you guys, because I'm going to be doing y'all's roll call, so I'll be online as well, so you guys, um, thank you for responding, uh, keep all the information uh, that you're writing down, so that we can verify you've been participating, just keep it for now, okay, um, thank you guys so much. Y'all are so much fun always. Uh, love your guys' uh, um, uh, block game, keeping it strong, blocking out those haters, those outsiders that don't belong on the on the beauty squad. So, um, but thank you for coming in and uh, joining us today. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I wonder what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for coming in today, guys. We appreciate it, and I appreciate you guys, too. It's been a lot of fun. So um, see you back tomorrow. Same time, same place. Um, uh, I'll be behind. I'll be in front of the camera um, tomorrow again uh, this time. But I'll be uh, – next is Katie up at 5, so come back at 5, and she's got you, and I'll be doing roll call. So, um, yeah, and then we'll – be back at it. It's weird being at the school without y'all. Kind of creepy, but. Bye, you guys. Bye. 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 Thanks, guys. Love you too. Yes, everyone stay safe and healthy.
Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Bye. Thank <clears throat> you.